Andy Johnson. This is a four part series, four videos looking at planning and conducting action research for teacher professional development. If you want to get a hold of me, you can find me there www.teaching reading.com. I do have some resources there. So, our workshop goal in these four videos to understand what action research is, to know how to conduct action research, and to be able to use action research for professional development. And this is kind of an overview of the things that we will look at. So, let's start our journey here. What is action research? Action research is a type of research related to one's professional practice. It could be in education or in any field. It's practitioner resource uh, research. It is a systematic process. Systematic is key here. Used to study a school, a classroom, or a teaching learning situation with the purpose to understand what's going on, and to improve the quality of instruction. This is action research in an educational system. And it can be a powerful tool, as you'll see, for teacher professional development. It's one of the best ways to, li to link theory and research directly to classroom practice. So, the basics of action research. We'll go over these seven action research descriptors, and you can see them right there. This acts as kind of an advanced organizer. So let's start with number one. It's a systematic method used to analyze and evaluate your own teaching practice or to solve a problem. Systematic and orderly are the key words. It is a method. It's pre-planned up front. It is method. Uh, it is uh, it's pre uh, methodical. There is a certain amount of flexibility in how data can be collected and analyzed and presented. More flexible for practitioner use but you are not conducting an experiment. That's a key difference, and it's often confused there. It is not whatever you think. It's not anything goes. It's not a description or observation of your ideas or an interesting project or unit or strategy that you use, or it's not an explanation of something that worked really well. It's a systematic observation of your own teaching practice. As such, you do not start with the answer. This is an underlying assumption of any type of research. You are an unbiased observer to the greatest extent possible. If you had the answer, you wouldn't be doing the research in the first place. Now, you may think method X is the best way to do something, but you do not conduct research to prove that it's the best way. Instead, you conduct research to understand why method X might be the best way or to see if method X is effective. There's a difference there, but it should be an honest and unbiased account of what's incurring in the classroom. If it is unbiased to the greatest extent possible, you are a more credible researcher. You are more credible if you can demonstrate that you are unbiased. Action research projects vary in length. They could be very short or a little bit longer, but it's determined by the question, by the type of inquiry, and by the research environment and the parameters of your data collection. These all vary in what is the general purpose of the research project in the first place. Now note that in general, 
Here are just some general observations. If you're working with undergraduate students, if you're a college instructor, you can do some great little action research projects. Maybe they observe two class sessions. All right, that's a very small action research project to see what's going on there to understand. If you are a teacher, you can do short ones minimum of two weeks for data collection. That's just a rule of thumb, a common idea, an estimate. For professional presentations, academic journals, master's theses, or more formal, formal projects, think about two to nine months for data collection in general. These are just general suggestions. They're not hard, fast rules. However, keep in mind, that if your data collection is too short, you create an unrealistic picture or you run the risk of presenting an unrealistic view of what is occurring in that educational setting. Action research studies are planned. They must be adequately planned before you begin to collect the data. It is a systematic inquiry, not just an impressionistic view. That means you have a plan and a schedule for collecting data. This is in place before you begin to start. It's what separates a systematic inquiry from an impressionistic view. So it is common for your plans and data collection to change during the research. It's common for this to change as the study progresses. There is a certain amount of flexibility in action research projects, as long as you explain why things change in your report. Observations should be regular. They don't have to be long. A common form of observation is one minute. You observe and you write some notes and you put those notes in a folder. But the observations, you know, some are more formal than that. But observations must be consistent and pre-planned. They don't have to be long, but they do have to be consistent and have some sort of pre-planned schedule. And observations are only one form of data collection we'll be looking at some different methods of data collection that you can use. An important one, action research is grounded in theory. This is what connects the questions. This is what connects research to classroom practice. So you are connecting the questions and the conclusions to existing theory and research. The context of uh, research and theory, this, this connecting, this doing a literature review helps you understand what you are seeing. And this review of the literature, literature gives you credibility. Theoretical grounding lends credibility to your results. A review of the literature is an important part of this. Now, remember what I said up front, action research connects research and theory to classroom practice. It's one of the best ways to make that direct connection. Action research is not an experimental study. You're not trying to disprove a hypothesis. There's no experimental and control groups or independent and dependent variables. You're not trying to generalize to a larger population. The goal is to understand what's occurring in a particular setting. Now, quantitative methods are sometimes used with caution to look at a particular situation. This does not mean that quantitative data is not collected. Most often, qualitative methods are used as part of this. So let's take a look at nine steps, the steps of action research, knowing that this is a recursive process, meaning that these steps don't always progress in a linear fashion. 
Sometimes you skip steps. Sometimes steps are repeated uh, several times, or you do these steps in a different order. But here are some general guidelines for the steps. First, step one, decide what to study. Ask a question. Is there a problem you want to investigate, an area of interest, something you want to analyze and evaluate? What's going on here? What's happening in my math class? Is this effective? Boy, I have this problem with. All right. So it starts with deciding what to study. You ask a question, what do you want to know? What problem needs to be solved? Step two, the important one, again, do a review of the literature. You're examining professional journals, books, and other resources. You're seeing what others have found out or have to say about your research topic. This helps you connect and relate your topic to existing theories. Again, this lends credibility to your research, provides a theoretical context for your findings, lends credibility to your research, and gives you some ideas for how you might uh, conduct your research. And again, you link one of the strongest ways to link the research literature directly to classroom practice. And as stated, this theoretical context, this grounding of action research projects in a solid theoretical context helps you also to understand what's being observed. Now, there are two approaches to doing a literature review. The most common one is to review literature before collecting data. Now, this might help you formulate the question, or refine the pedagogical strategy or method that you are using, or provide ideas for collecting data. This is common. This is the most traditional. However, you could also review literature as the data is being reported or collected or the conclusions are being drawn. Here, the literature is related to each concluding point. You're connecting what you are finding to the literature. Either way, but the important thing is to connect to the literature in some way. And the onus is always on you to create a credible, coherent report that's grounded in a theoretical context. There is a certain amount of freedom in organizing this action research project and report, but at the end of the day, the onus is on you, the researcher, to create this credible, coherent action research project or report or presentation. Step three, methodology. Make a plan for data collection. What data are you going to examine? How are these data going to be collected? How often will it be collected? You make a plan, and again, this plan can be flexible. It can change. That's okay. As long as you explain and describe why the changes occurred in your action research uh, report. So the data collection, elements of data collection must be determined before the research begins. begins. And again, action research is a systematic observation. You should generally, rule of thumb, collect at least two kinds of data. This gives you at least two vantage points to observe what you are, or to, to view what you are uh, examining. And I'll provide you some ideas for uh, data collection a little bit later. But at least two kinds of data to collect. So you're observing this thing from at least two different vantage points. Could be more than that, but at least two. Step four, you begin to collect and analyze the data. Now, it's very common to analyze data as they are collected. Now, if we're using uh, observations, we use inductive analysis to begin to look for patterns and categories, see these things emerge. 
And this initial analysis of the data often influences further data collection. It provides insight as to what sorts of things to look for. You see the categories and then you begin to look for these categories. So it's very common to begin to analyze data as they are collected. In traditional quantitative studies, we wait till the end to analyze data. If necessary, allow the question or the problem to change as the data are collected. Action research is dynamic, ever-changing. It's common to take change teaching strategies or data sources or even the focus of the data collection. If something's not working, you change it. And this change is acceptable as long as the reasons for change are fully described when reporting the action research. For example, if you're going to examine a strategy and you find that that strategy is absolutely not working or you need to change something or your data collection isn't working, it is absolutely okay to change that in your project. Step number six, do a final analysis and organization of the data. This could be the final step in an ongoing process if the data has been analyzed and organizing as it has been collected. And as I said, you use inductive analysis. How many total things were recorded? How many categories? How many in each category were collected? This is inductive analysis. You try to induce order on the field. You're looking for patterns and putting things in groups. And as well, if you have quantitative data, that's collected as well. You make conclusions and recommendations. You interpret the data. You tell what the data means, but the conclusions must be based on the data. Your recommendations must be based on the data. You are answering your research question or addressing the problem based on the data. Based on this, this is what I conclude. Based on the data you collect. Now again, some action research uh, includes a literature review at this point. On all your conclusions, you do a literature review. That is perfectly acceptable. Step number eight is what puts the action in action research. You design a plan of action. Based on your conclusions and recommendations, what exactly will you do or do differently? What needs to be done as a result of your research? You create this plan and then you implement your plan. The plan of action needs to be evaluated. And finally, you report your findings. Your findings can present, be presented, and I'll show you some ideas in a written report, a scholarly report. You might present at either a, a conference or maybe to your colleagues. If you're doing this for teacher professional development, we should expect a product or performance as a result of this. And again, this is a very legitimate form of teacher professional development. You are linking research in theory directly to classroom practice. All right, the next video will look at types of data to collect in action research.